back to the daily grind thanks for checking out the channel make sure to hit subscribe if you're new and hit thumbs up if you're not a baby back bagel biting bitch boy cause you know what time it is it's full time MMA full time family I fucking am not excited about this news I was excited about breaking this news I was exciting about being one of the first people on this rumor I was excited about knowing this was going to happen before the Tony Ferguson, Kevin Lee fight. But then, but then, Conor McGregor, after Tony Ferguson fought Kevin Lee, took to Twitter with the Tony, and he just put Grand Theft Auto-inspired shit. I assumed he was talking about Tony Ferguson. I assumed that meant Conor was DTF Tony Ferguson. But now, he could have been talking about motherfucking Tony McGregor, you know what I'm saying? He just put Tony. He never said Tony Ferguson. He never really got in a real back and forth with Tony Ferguson. If you remember, there was a long time before Conor McGregor would even mention the first half of his name. Conor went a long time with ever even saying Tony, let alone Ferguson, you know what I'm saying? So, that was enough, like, oh shit, Conor's finally responded to Tony Ferguson. Maybe he's down to unify the belt. So that's where I kind of was like, okay, if Conor does this, Everyone's got to shut the fuck up. You can't hate on Conor McGregor. If he's really going to come back and defend versus Tony Ferguson, for one, that's the lowest um, reward, highest risk fight. That's not what you see out of megastars. That's not what you see out of any megastars. You don't ever see fighters coming back and taking on the highest risk for the lowest reward. It's always the opposite. You see fighters taking the highest reward for the lowest risk. That's why Floyd Mayweather is going to fight uh, Conor McGregor because he's never boxed before and he's going to make the same amount of money as if he's fighting a real killer. That's why um, Conor McGregor is going to fight Floyd Mayweather because even I'm going to make a million dollars and even if I lose, oh well, it's a boxing match. There's not really much risk there. If you fight Tony Ferguson, you're risking everything and it's going to be the lowest amount of pay-per-view draws. So that's why it's like, yo... It doesn't make sense for Conor McGregor to take this fight. He's probably going to either vacate or be stripped. And I was along that line until he said Tony Ferguson's name. And I was like, yo, everyone's about to have to shut the fuck up. Well, now, months later, after Khabib Nurmagomedov beat Edson Barboza, and now there's two serious lightweight contenders that could be fighting for a title. And, you know, the undisputed title, Tony Ferguson or Khabib Nurmagomedov. Now the pressure's really on Conor McGregor. Bro, are you going to defend or are you going to vacate? That's what we need to know. Because you fought Floyd Mayweather, you had your baby, you made $100 million, you're spending all this money cool story lightweight divisions getting jammed up so we need something to happen there buddy and i understand when you come back this is the thing a lot of people say no you know even conor mcgregor fans hit me up i'm not going to be a fan of conor if he doesn't defend his belt how could he do that man i, I was one of the people that defended conor and i'm like listen yo 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 i understand you were a conor standing all but just hear me out bro conor mcgregor's got too much money to give a fuck about your feelings <laughs> no, i'm just saying bro Conor McGregor's got too much money. He's transcended the belt. I understand you as a fucking diehard Conor Stan. You thought Conor was the truth. You believed all the fucking mysteries and the hype stories. And you believed it all about Conor McGregor. You thought he was actually one of the greatest fighters ever. But that's just not the case. He's one of the most entertaining fighters ever, but he's not one of the most well-rounded fighters ever. He never defended a belt out of four belts. He didn't clear out the lightweight division. To be honest, I don't even know if he cleared out the featherweight division, but what he did do was uh, kick some ass and talk some shit on his way up and turn into a megastar. So Conor McGregor's not going to have to clear out divisions. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And so with that being said, Conor McGregor has transcended the belt. Conor McGregor doesn't need this title. You know what I'm saying? He's made $100 million. If Conor McGregor gets stripped or vacates, and then he comes back in September, which is what it's looking like, Conor wants to come back in September. If Conor McGregor comes back in September with no belt, everyone's watching the fight. You, you, her, him, and him. Everybody's watching Conor McGregor, whether it's versus Nate Diaz. And now this is what they've had to say. He said if Conor wants his belt, you know, he can definitely come and fight the winner of Tony or Khabib in September. Yeah, that's not fucking happening. Sorry. If you're not going to defend your belt, you're not going to come back and try and re-win your belt. Because defending, we all know Conor can win a belt. We've never seen him defend a belt. So even if Conor does come back and beat Tony Ferguson or Khabib, no one, like the Conor haters, is going to say, yeah, but you didn't defend that belt. 
So unless you want to now start defending it, which I don't see happening because Connor transcended that fucking belt. So what I'm saying is when Connor comes back, it's likely to be against Nate Diaz or it's likely to be against Floyd Mayweather, Pauly McGoogles, or maybe Khabib in Russia if Khabib's got the title. Connor, I do believe, would fight a Khabib or a Tony Ferguson not Tony Ferguson, and it's, and it's and it, to me this has nothing to do with like their even their fighting skills. Um, Khabib, now on the other hand, for Connor to accept the fight with Khabib, he's got to be a crazy motherfucker. But the reason I could see Connor doing it is only because the Russia thing. You know, Connor wants to fight Khabib in Russia. And Russia's got a lot of fans. Connor might want to win over. So the only reason I see Connor fighting one of these guys is to like fucking take over a country. Tony Ferguson, I don't think Connor's worried about fighting Tony Ferguson in Mexico or America, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, it is what it is. Let the full-time family know what you think about Conor McGregor, the UFC planning on stripping Conor McGregor. This is as official as it's gonna get. I've been reporting these rumors that Conor's gonna be stripped for fucking months now, but Conor's been doing his, you know, dog, that dog shit tag Danny's performance was bullshit. Like, oh shit, are you gonna fight him? Oh, Tony, oh shit, are you gonna fight him? Turns out that was not what that meant. He's probably not gonna fight Khabib Nurmagomedov or Tony Ferguson, he's just gonna reign over the fucking champion like a fucking MMA god looking down at his employees because he wants a piece of the pie, and as soon as Conor McGregor becomes part owner in the UFC, all of these guys are literally gonna be his fucking employees, which to me seems like a conflict of interest because think about the people that Conor McGregor has went back and forth with. If Conor McGregor's an owner of the UFC, do you think he fucking gives Nate Diaz special treatment or the opposite? Do you think he gives Tony Ferguson, who's been calling him McNugget, special treatment or the opposite? It just kind of seemed, and what about, now flip side, Artem Lobov, all of Conor McGregor's teammates, they probably get to fight until they fucking retire, even if they're on a 10 fight losing streak, because their fucking brother, their fucking best buddy, Conor McGregor now owns the UFC. So I don't know how this is going to work, but we do know Conor McGregor wants a piece of the pie. Before I get out of this video, I just got to talk to a couple of you fucking nerds about that Paige Van Zandt injury, because I've continued to see two more people in one of you were a fucking full-time family member, maybe day one hitter, that was saying, you spoke too soon on the Paige Van Zandt injury. I'm gonna say this one last time and I'm not gonna bring up this motherfucking injury again. I'm gonna tell you, you didn't watch the fight. If, if you're telling me about Paige Van Zandt's injury and how real it looked, you didn't watch the fight. Because I'm a hardcore fan and I was watching the fight with four or five other fucking people and they all in chorus said, what, when did she break her arm? In the corner, we got to hear the corner cam, They, she, her corner told her, you're down two rounds. And she was like, yeah, I know. I broke my hand in the first round. Like, what the first? You mean the second? Like, what? wait. Because then, check this out. In the third round, Paige Van Zandt's not throwing her right, not throwing her right, throwing kicks, trying to let everybody know her arm's broken. How come we weren't noticing that in the fucking second round? How come she wasn't doing that in the second round if she broke her shit in the first? Did she re-aggravate it? And I get it, I understand. But the only reason I and, and, and the only reason I think that this is even a possibility, I'm not a person, I don't like to joke about injuries. Even GSP's colitis that made him vacate the belt, as suspect as that is, I'm not gonna question it because it's an injury. So yeah, Paige Van Zant, and if you listen to my fucking video, oh my god, how do you comment on the video you didn't listen to? Bro, I said, watch, there's gonna be a picture with Paige Van Zandt's arm snap tomorrow. And lo and fucking behold, Paige Van Zandt's got the worst arm breaking I've ever seen in history, even though it didn't look like that in the fight. She even threw a fucking spinning elbow with the right hand in the third round with the broken arm. So, it is what it is. She had on her invisible sling when they made the announcement. And I gotta say this, because if I'm, if this is the last time I'm touching on this topic, I feel like I should fucking clarify another thing going into this. Paige Van Zandt is a star, fighting or not. Dancing with the Stars. You're not fucking on Dancing with the Stars if you're not a... It's not Dancing with the Randos. It's Dancing with the Stars. Paige Van Zandt's a star. Paige Van Zandt has marketability written all over her. Fucking, she's got the look. She's fucking, you know, got the personality. She's all bubbly and shit. She looks like everybody's little fucking sister. My little white sister I never had and shit. She fucking... She's pretty. She's got everything going for her. Why does she doesn't need to get punched in the face in the octagon, especially if she's going to be a journeywoman in the UFC? It's time for Paige Van Zandt to go acting or go do WWE or go do fucking Dancing with the Stars 3 or Dancing with the Fighters or whatever she wants to do outside of the octagon because I don't think Paige Van Zandt wants to get beat up as a journeywoman in flyweight. She had her issues at strawweight making weight. She moved up 
and didn't look great in her fight versus Jessica Rose Clark. And so now she broke her arm and she's probably not going to fight again. And all I'm saying is, what, I want you to go back, fight pass. I got fight pass so I can even rewatch the fight. And another thing is, in the fucking post fight interview, it's the co main event and you're not even showing none of Jessica Rose Clark's highlights. This girl just beat Paige Van Zandt in the co-main event. Her fucking house was just burglarized. Her cat was just killed. And we don't get to see no fucking highlights. Why? Because they don't want us to see that motherfucking Paige Van Zandt arm. No, I'm just kidding. That might be small conspiracy shit. But it is what it is, man. This is the fucking entertainment industry. And if you don't want one of your biggest stars to take a hit and fucking... You know, everyone thinks Paige Van Zandt, oh, she's a badass, she fights in the UFC, like all the casuals, a lot of people that aren't hardcore fans, they don't realize she's like, not all she's cracked out to be as a fighter, well then yeah, this all makes sense to me, so with that being said, I really don't care what the fuck you think about it, I'm not even going to talk about it again, because it's not that big of a deal to me, it's not my business, to be personally honest, I I'm not dying to see Paige Van Zandt's next fight in the UFC after last night, what's she going to do, fight at 125 pounds, and what? I mean, so with that being said, I would page. I want to see Paige Van Zant be successful. I don't just want to see somebody get beat up because they're a fucking fighter. So with that being said, I've said enough on that topic. Don't ask me about the Paige Van Zant fucking arm injury again. No, I don't. But fucking know if it happened. But I seen the X-ray. That's all I gotta say, man. Fuck, that's so weird. I'm out. P.S. Full-time family, I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. I almost didn't upload this video because I realized after I recorded it how many fucking people are going with this Paige Van Zant arm broken thing. And it makes sense, you know, I completely get it for Paige Van Zant's career. The arm injury gives her an excuse for the loss. All I'm saying is the people I was watching the fight with, and this is all I've been saying from the beginning, the people who I was watching the fight with, including myself, we didn't see the injury in the fight until Going into the third round, she said she broke her arm in the first round. After Paige Van Zandt found out she was down two rounds, she said her arm was broke from the first round. Then she came into the third round, like, showing that her arm was broke, either acting or it was, you know, just hanging there, until she threw this fucking crazy spinning back fist. So now I see a lot of people saying, oh, the spinning back fist is where she broke her arm. So I had to Google it and say, what, did she throw a spinning back fist in the first round that broke her arm? She said she broke it in the first. And so this is the fucking spinning back fist everyone's talking Third about. Round. Here it is right here. Yep. That would definitely now be it that spinning back fist. And that was right. Yeah. That was in the third round. After the final bet. That was right after the final Third round. Rounds. You guys hear him about to say that was right after the final bill? Paige Van Zandt's arm was allegedly broken in the first round. This spinning back fist was in the third round. And there's also websites saying that this is where the broke came from and now the media is being taken down. So what all I'm asking is I'm leaving this fucking topic alone for, from the people watching this video or commenting on this video, the full-time family. Will someone please find me where Paige Van Zandt broke her arm in the first round? Because everything to me is just pointing the other way. And and the last thing before I get out of here, because it's fucking snowing and my car's warming up, so I'm on a time crunch. But before I get out of here, there's other people that are saying, yeah, but Paige Van Zandt posted a picture of a broken arm. So what I'm going to do for you guys is go over to motherfucking Google.com down here yonder. And I'm going to type in broken arm x-ray. And we're going to see what happens when we click images. Oh, look, guys. Big full time. I just broke my arm. I'm going to put this on Twitter. Ah! Fuck out of here, dog. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, full time family. So I'm going to leave this joint alone because I'm not some fucking MMA whistleblower. Fucking blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. I just, in my head, I kind of see what's going on here, but... The story is Paige Van Zandt broke her arm, so that's what we're rocking with. When we speak on Paige Van Zandt in the future, we're going to be speaking as if she's got a broken arm because that's what it's looking like. So with that being said, it is what it is. Let the full-time family know what you think about Paige Van Zandt's broken arm in the comments. All right, I'm out, man. I'm fucking out, dog. <laughs>